So, hello everyone and thanks for having me. I'm very happy to be here with you in Prague. And I'll try to tell you about all about uh, the Django project website. But to be more precise, I want to tell you all I know about the Django project website. This is the homepage of the Django project website. You might think that uh, it's the same as in the past years, but I can assure you that a lot of people are working and maintaining and adding new feature to this website. Like the dark mode version added a few months ago, together with other accessibility improvements. I'm helping myself uh, uh, maintaining the website, adding new features, so I want to tell you all I know about this website, but first I want to introduce myself a bit. I'm Paolo Mecchiore, I'm the CTO of 20Tab, a Patonic software company based in Italy. I'm a contributor to Django project, DSF member, and I also organize some Django Girls workshop. And help, I'm helping PyCon Italia and organizing uh, lately the um, Python group in Pescara, my own time in Italy. And now, I want to tell my personal knowledge journey with the Django project website. The first section of the Django project website that I ever visited is the download section. In this picture, I'm in my first conference ever. It was the Plon conference in 2007. At that time, I was using Zoop, another web framework based in, on, in Python. But during the conference, someone talked to me about Django. So the first thing I did was going to the download page of the website. This was the aspect at the time. It already contained all the information to download Django uh, 096 uh, as a compressed archive or development version using subversion. And this is the same download page as you can see today. It has a new theme. It also contains more information about different Django version and all the methods to download and install as a Python package. In the same page, you can also find this interesting graph with the present and future Django version. I found it very useful to plan project maintenance uh, based on the period and the date or release for new version and also the end of life for other version. Personally, after downloading it, I haven't used Django right after that. But when I decided to give a try, uh, I went in another section of the web, uh, web page, the documentation part. In this other picture, I'm in a group of Zoop developer at EuroPython 2011. It was organized in Florence. In that conference, I attended the for the first time two talks about Django and were presented by Simon Willison, one of the creator, main creator of the Django, and Tom Christie, the creator of Django REST framework, and they inspired me to study more Django. So to do that, I went in the documentation. And this is the documentation at the time. It was very basic, and there is no search function or other feature, but it already contained the tutorial that helped me a lot as newcomers to do the first steps in Django. This is the same documentation today. It has the same clear structure, but it has more and more contents. Other than show you the content overall page, like this one, it has a new interesting feature that I found useful and I want to show you right now. And the first is the offline documentation download function. Uh, thanks to Read the Docs, you can download version of the documentation in different formats and you can find the more useful for you. Uh, this is the HTML version that you can download as a single compressed archive. I personally have every time a copy locally on my computer and I use when I don't have any connection on my computer. The theme is a little different, but the content are the same that you can find online. This is, that is the PDF version of the documentation and uh, I found it very convenient to share because it's only one file 
you can distribute with uh, other people and it's also very easy to take notes on it or highlight some part if you want. And finally, the format that I found more useful is the um, EPUB version. You, you can see here in my book reader and I found very, very useful traveling around or where I can't or don't want to open my personal computer so I can read information in it. Another documentation feature very important for me is the full text search. Uh, today is, it has a lot of features, it's multilingual, it's based on, you know, on Postgres, uh, and it does uh, highlighting and support web search syntax. After using the old version of the search function of the Django uh, project website, I tried myself to improve it. This is another photo from the Django Sprint <clears throat> that organized at EuroPython 2017 in, in Rimini. I propose to work on Django project website trying to use this full text search based on Postgres because at that time was, uh, was using an external search engine. And after that sprint, I worked in the pull request and in a few months we replaced totally the external search engine and we start using only Django to provide uh, this functionality. Here you can see an example, the full text search feature I've integrated since the first implementation. Uh, as you can see, it's on French version of the documentation, also the input text is in French and there are many features you can use, like exact phrase search, uh, word removal, the results are in French too, and there is the first implementation of highlighting the, the word you, you search for. And other than French, currently, Django documentation for text search engine can potentially support 20, 28 different languages out of the box, thanks to Postgres. This is the complete list. However, only seven of them have a public translation of the documentation at the moment. To find the other translation of the documentation, you can use the language selector menu that you can see expanded from the right. It is uh, over the content, but it, it closes uh, immediately when you select another language. And this is the same menu in the mobile version. You can see more clearly all the languages you can select. The list is long, is long enough, but uh, we can be even longer counting on how big our community is. So we need help for everyone, also you maybe, to translate the Django documentation in more languages and to help newcomers to start reading and studying documentation in other languages than this one. So please join the Django translation project. It is on Transifex. It helps uh, um, other people and you can see here the dashboard with some metrics on it. More and more people are joining in the last uh, version, um, so it's it easy to contribute. And also, personally, after using Django for so long only in English, I decided to join the Italian translation group and uh, started helping them to, uh, to have a, um, a version, uh, a pub public version of this documentation. As you can see, the process can be also fun <laughs> to, to contribute and it's very, very um, interesting. I learned a lot trying to translate things I ever read only in English. The back tracker was the next Django project website section I started using after the documentation. Um, you can find it in this subdomain sub uh, in which is hosted um, an instant of track. Uh, which is an open source project management and bug tracking system uh, still written in Python. This photo I'm at the end of the sprint at DjangoCon Europe in 2017 uh, with two Django core developer, Mark and Marcus, who helped me in my work in my first ever Django issue and other than reviewing my pull request, they also helped me starting using the issue tracker which is a bit different from other interface in the Django website. And this is my very first issue I created in the Django backtracker. You can read the instruction on how to use the web tracker and uh, the correct workflow 
but I suggest you to start reading other issues from other people and then try to open yourself an issue for the first time and as I did six years ago. The Django issue tracking contains a lot of issues and searching on it can be intimidating, but you can use uh, these other resource in the web, uh, web website, the dashboard subdomain, and it try to help you to navigate all the issue and read all the metrics. This is a screenshot of the development dashboard. Uh, I took some days ago, but the number today can be different. As you can see, it shows easy to read metrics and also has a link to preset filters for the issue tracker. It contains more metrics if you go down with the, scroll down with the page. If you want to contribute to the Django project, I will suggest you to bookmark this page because it's easy to check every day what is going on and what you can concentrate in. Maybe you want to read the easy to newcomer issue or pull request to review. So it's very, very convenient to access all these uh, resources without searching by yourself in the issue tracker. There are other sections on the website that I only discovered after this one. And the first is the community section. Uh, I used this section to find all the Django community resources as different mailing lists and uh, more recently also the, the forum and the Discord server. In this same page, you also can scroll down and find the Django RSS feed section it has been very useful to me to be updated on the Django community and also to find new articles and new blog related to, to the argument of Django. And as you can see, you can expand one of these sections and you can see the latest item in every section. And more important, you can also add the feed or your blog to be added in this list. And I did the same some, some years ago. Other than community blog, I also started reading the official blog in the Django project website. It contains all the events and also news published since the first Django release. Personally, I found very funny and interesting reading the very first post from the first area of Django, as you can see in this screenshot, because it's a way for me to understand how Django community born and growing up and also to find story interesting from people that started this community and the, this framework. And this same page you can also find aside the upcoming events in the Django community, like for example, the DjangoCon in Europe, US and Australia. And this year we also have the DjangoCon uh, Africa for the first time. One of the last section I ever read as a user was the one about Django Software Foundation uh, because it also was one of the most difficult to find. It contains a lot of very interesting information about Django and its foundation. And I found this page late in my career as a Django user, and, but then when I found it, I learned more about the foundation, it, its goal, and uh, I found also the list of people involved, the member, the board, and unfortunately, it's not well organized and a bit difficult to, to navigate. The last section I want to show you, it's very important for the foundation, and it's the fundraising section, where you can donate some money to the foundation, and they can then distribute to different conference or John Google's workshop and uh, other initiative. In this section, you can find the list of all the sponsor that donated and uh, you can also donate uh, uh, if you want. Uh, you can also do a one, uh, one time uh, donation or recurring one and also, the user experience in this page is not the best one. You can also try to donate in the GitHub section. Um, but we are trying to uh, work on this, on this page, and we are doing something about that. I took this picture during PyCon Italia uh, 2000, uh, 2023 in Florence. 
Uh, these are two of my colleagues, Laura and Virginia, and they gave a talk on the work we are doing to improve the djangoproject.com. They are both experienced UX designer, and they are helping us analyzing the situation on the Django website from the, their point of view. Uh, during the last DjangoCon US in San Diego, um, a former Django fellow, Carton and Will, the treasurer at that moment, asked me as a CTO of 20 Tab to help the foundation to improve the user experience of the, of the website. And we were ha happy to, to help. So our user expert did the analysis in a few steps. They browsed on the website, looked for things that can be improved, and they did a lot of analyzing uh, on, this, on this part. They made a report with the results, and the most prominent were uh, the most prominent issue were related to accessibility, um, call to action not uniform, uh, navigation flow uh, disrupted, and also inconsistent breadcrumbs. So after analyzing it, we decided to open a survey and interview people from the community. So the first step is just the user survey. And my colleague, Virginia and Laura, made this survey after the analyzing work. I strongly invite you to scan this QR code and briefly answer the survey question. It will only take very few minutes, I think two or three minutes. You will only find questions on your experience in this website and also with all the section I talked to you about, the donation one, and uh, your feedback will be very useful to the Django community and this foundation to improve how we can let people have a better user experience and help them to find the information they want. So please answer and uh, contribute to this, to this project. And the last photo is from DjangoCon Europe 2022 in Porto. I I'm here with Chul and Sara, two very con active contributors in the Django project repository. Um, the GitHub repository was the main point to contribute to the Django project website, and uh, I started doing it some years ago. So I invite you all to go there and start reading some issue you can be interested in. You can also try to take in charge some of this issue. A lot of them are very, very small. And also you can propose a pull request to fix some of this issue because any help from the community is very, very appreciated. I hope I have been able to tell you all I know about the Django project website. And if you want, you can download this presentation uh, because it's released with uh, a Creative Commons license and I'll share you the link in a in a minute. So as a 20 tab, we'll share information about our contribution mission with the Django website, and you can find out more about our company using this context. And to find out more about my personal work on Django, and also to download this, this presentation, you can scan this QR code, or you can contact me in this context. So thanks. I only have to ask a favor. I have a tradition to take a picture with my audience, if you don't mind. There are people with the, that don't want to show, maybe. Thank you, Paolo. Now we will have our five and maybe even a little bit more question and answer section, please. Stand up, can you hear, ask your questions? While you're thinking about your questions, maybe I can ask Paolo. Yeah. Uh, I'm tech community manager. I'm not writing code by day right now. Is there any way I can help? Yes, for example, uh, answering the survey, it will be also very useful to um, understand how people can enter the website, maybe searching not technical stuff like about the foundation, the um, events, uh, how money are spent from the foundation in uh, uh, some uh, 
initiative like Django Girls or similar, and you can also help opening issue, for example, if you find something that is not working properly in your computer, in the website in particular, or maybe you can find some accessibility issue that are very, very important for us. We are trying to um, improve in this aspect uh, to let also everyone to read the content and to also, um, you can read, for example, also the meeting report from the board because everything is open, also the, uh, how we spend money, and there are election about it. You can find story and blog post news, so there are a lot of not technical stuff that you can find it, or you can try to improve. Thank you, happy to help. Anyone else? Hi. Hi. Uh, what do you suggest uh, if uh, a local groups or perhaps also university want to host uh, a Django workshop? Uh, do you think it's better to just ask uh, through the website or you have direct contact with the community? And uh, also to, if there is uh, perhaps some examples of workshops based on uh, how much time would uh, last could be a, a great um, uh, great point for university to take on board new yeah, workshops of this kind. You can go in the um, Django Software Foundation section. There are contacts. You can ask directly to be supported in your initiative that promote Django or that are trying to promote Django with um, not more represented uh, people. It, it, it's very common to organize Django Girls workshop because it's, it's ready to use. You can download the guide. Uh, everything is is uh, prepared. There is every step for people. But if you are organizing a, a local meetup, um, for example, I joined the Django Day in Copenhagen last year, and they did something very similar. The foundation are open to uh, every initiative. So let's let's try to ask. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks Hi. for this talk. Uh, just curious, uh, how many people are actively working on the content of the documentation of Django? I imagine it's a lot of work with all the security fixes, for example, need to be synchronized with older version of the documentation. And yeah. Yeah, usually the documentation is uh, um, something you have to add when you modify something. So contributing to the Django uh, repository itself you have to add a new um, section in the release notes or you have to fix uh, at the same time uh, information about it. And sometimes we received also pull requests to improve some section that are not clear or that are based on information that now is not um, valid anymore because things change. And there is also a specific group that work on the security issue uh, because uh, you can you can contact them directly before something very um, dangerous can happen in the in some version and there is a specific email you can contact if you find something uh, like that and they work is a small team elected and they work together to fix it as soon as possible and release uh, uh, news about it only when the commit that fixed this part of the documentation part is already released. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Thank you. If there is no more questions, let's give a round of applause to Paolo. Thank you. And I'm around so if you have a